So welcome again to Author Talk Short. And this is where Amy and I, or Amy or I, interview people for just um, little five to 10 minute segments. And then we air them on um, different platforms. So we are very excited that for this time and over the period of the next couple of months, is it a couple of months? Yeah, yeah we'll be months. talking and doing some um, shorts with Rox Berkey and Charles Brakefield, who are the Brakefield and Berkey author group who writes the Enigma book series. Hence the background that they have now where you can see the Enigma book series. So, well, I want to talk to them today because one of the things most anybody that knows me knows I love stories. I love to hear an author tell their story like, oh my gosh, it just thrills me. So I want to find out and I want to hear and talk about where, where did the Enigma book idea come from? And when did you get started? I know you two, I know from your background, you two both were in IT and had been for years and occasionally worked together on projects or whatever, um, or the same company. Did you ever work for the same company and you worked yep. together? Yeah, two of them. Okay. Of different companies, no less. So. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, so Rox and Charles, tell us about the Enigma series and how, how that got started. Oh, Sandy, thank you. So I'm going to start this and then Charles can chime in. Um, we actually got connected through a company called Arabach years ago to write technical manuals. And so we created two non-fictional technical manuals and they took probably, you know, four to five months each. Um, they were not stellar bestsellers because technology from a non-fiction perspective, you know, the day you publish it, it's outdated. And so after doing the second one, um, Charles said, you know, I'm done. I'm like, so done writing with you. I'm like, fine, okay, no problem. I picked up all my marbles and stomped off. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so then I thought, well, that's silly because you know we have an awful lot of rich technology in our work and we kind of have an idea of what's going on. So I started writing a fictional book and I started with the Enigma Factor which is book one in the series. And it's about identity theft. And I got, I don't know, six or seven chapters roughed out and shipped it over to him. And I said, why don't you take a look at this and see if you want to go down the path of fiction because inside these books, we can kill people. And what happened? Uh, so we got even with a lot of people that ticked us off over the years. I mean, it's, um, well, <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, that's a great story. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Landscape is littered with people that have aggravated us uh, in our uh, in our business environment. So uh, um, we were a little bit too heavy handed with it. We started running out of uh, uh, people that we knew that we wanted to whack. So uh, <laughs> we actually had to invent some uh, some some new characters, and and we started piecing together uh, different character studies. So it uh, it allowed us to be able to stretch. Uh, the uh, the fabric uh, you know it, it's easy to they say start with what you know so we did um, but that kind of gives you into the, uh, the the juices moving and next thing you know it's like we got an idea let's try this let's try that you know um, every once in a while I'll do something and and uh, she'll say we're stuck here how do we get out of this and so when we started this and we wrote the the Enigma Factor and we did the the self publishing perspective on that. That was great. And Charles was really excited. He goes, well, okay, let's do, let's do a trilogy. And I remember very clearly looking at him square in the eye and saying, oh no, we're going to do a series. And so we took that from a theme to theme perspective. And that's why each of the books really has a focused theme. So like the first one was, you know, identity theft, like I mentioned. And if you can notice the Enigma source, which has garnered a whole bunch of awards, um, last year and uh, um, that one's focused on cryptocurrency. So there are relevant focuses on technology for each of them. Kind of the good news part about that is that uh, it, uh, it doesn't lend itself to an easy formula. There is no formula. So when you read the books and we had the reviewers tell us this, that um, this is fresh. This isn't the same old, okay, the same plot, different, um, you know, different locations going through 
book after book after book. That's not fair to the reader. Um, so um, we, we saw that early on because the, uh, the different challenges gave us different personality uh, traits, um, different bad guys that had different, uh, different values uh, for conquering the, uh, the planet. <clears throat> yeah, no values. We say no values. No they, values. Bad okay. guys have no values yeah, in the okay, cyber no. world. Well, they're different values. Okay, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, there's there's ones and zeros in my world. They have zero, and I, well, I've got I think I've got at least two anyway. So, um, but but it uh, it makes for um, a very satisfying read through the series because they don't read the same way. They don't have the same plot. They don't have necessarily the same. They have a core people that we uh, we we keep from uh, from book to book. But they're sprinkled in either light or heavy uh, in the uh, in the storytelling process, and that's uh, that gives a uh, a different feel to the reader. So you can read uh, it in order. Me. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Raj. What what did you say? I just was going to mention you absolutely can read them out of order and be comfortable that you've gotten a good story. Yeah. Conversely, if you read them in, uh, in sequence. We don't bore you with the endless details to be able to catch you up for the last book, book after that, book before that, so forth and so on. So you mentioned that some people remain in all of the books. Who, who are these people? What is their role in, in your books? So I think it's the good guys, primarily, that we have kept, or the, the protagonist side of it. And, the, and they are members of the R group. And the R group at this, at the initial juncture of breaking into the series, um, they, there are three generations that are, that are available from the first book on. Um, but this is not his story from a, we're gonna start in World War II, but, but rather that we do refer to World War II because of the moral compass that the R group developed because of trying to get away from the Nazis and leave Poland in 1939. And that was in the first book, Enigma Factor? Um, yeah. Well, well, actually, we, we sprinkle that story, the, the backstory of the R group throughout all the books. We don't get Ah, it. OK, got it. You know, it's not a, here's a heavy dose in one book and that we're done. Uh, it's uh, snippets here, backstories here, um, references that um, we pick up and uh, thread throughout the, uh, the series so that they, um, that piece of information is, is introduced when it's relevant for the story. Okay, so like, who are the R group? Who, 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 who makes up the R group? So the R group, <clears throat> at least initially, um, was made up from, I would guess, the, the patriot group um, that were the, the decisive people on voting, what they took care of, what they didn't take care of, which projects they got involved in. And initially those were Furtick, Bukowski, right? Is that right? I always get, yeah. to, I, I can't pronounce the last names. Um, uh, Wolfgang, um, who are both um, from the World War II, and then Otto. And Otto is actually a second mm -hmm. generation. Well, oh, okay, well, well for, the, for the current R group, you're right, okay. For the, for the R group that's introduced um, as being the decision maker. So they actually have a, you know, a voting process, the three-legged stool kind of thing. But the people who really take front and center um, are Jacob and, and uh, uh, Petra initially, and Quip. And Quip is the uh, PhD in information systems and the creator of Ichabod. And Ichabod is our inanimate character. And what does Ichabod stand for? Ichabod is a, a artificial intelligent enhanced supercomputer. And it's, it's an acronym that uh, basically is, uh, it's the interactive collaborative associative Binary override and determinic systems. So, so that's a whole out, mouthful. So we always use the is a is an acronym um, Ichabod. And he evolves from from book one all the way through. So he is never the same in each book. He's actually picking up technology along the way and learning how to have certain supercomputer and machine learning capabilities. So if I read the Enigma Factor and then I didn't read anything else, so I read the Enigma Stolen, then I would still see the same R group characters in in both books. With the exception of Furtick. 
because by that point in time, Pritik has, has passed away. He's, he's an older person. So. Ah, okay. Okay. So, oh, wow. Someone dies from the R group. That's interesting. Well, by book number 10. I'm sorry. Book number. So, so we do have other people that come into the R group and evolve over time. So those are the, the primary core people, but there, there are additions because, you know, we have technology and then we layer on a little bit of, of story and, and with every story you have people and with people you sometimes have relationships which could be a little a little touch of romance and you know they're based in Zurich Switzerland so we have the technology we layer on travel then we go go ahead and have a little bit of romance and then <clears throat> Charles's best attribute is the humor that he interjects uh, I can't imagine Charles doing humor um, so that's that's great. I love I love knowing that. I love it telling people, you know, okay, here's the R group, and they are the heroes, um, and they change. The the people change, except for the consistent ones. So this has been great, and to know where the Enigma series came from and how you and Charles work together. So thank you for this. This is going to be the end of our author talk short, and we'll be back later with more about the Enigma series with Charles Brakeville and Rox Berkey. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.